<laughs> so I read a lot of nonfiction. I don't know if you all do, but it's um, you can tell when writers are pained at exposure. Like it's some hard, it's hard for them to be vulnerable. It's hard for them to share intimate moments. And this book is a collection of journal entries, mm -hmm. which is inherently vulnerable and intimate. How? What process did you use to go through the journals of your life and pick out the the selections that told your story without concealing? Because I think a lot of times writers want to paint themselves in a light or make sure that when people are reading it, they think of them in a certain light as opposed to just giving them information for them to decipher for themselves. So how did you go through and edit? That was actually the deal I made with myself because I never would have thought of uh, publishing journals. I've been keeping journals and diaries since I was 11 years old. So I've got diaries all over the place. Wow. But um, I never would have thought of publishing them. But I said to my daughter when my uh, first granddaughter was about three, um, just we were having lunch, and I said, um, when Chloe gets to be 16, I want to give her all these diaries and journals. <laughs> and my daughter said, absolutely not. <laughs> and I was like, you mean absolutely not? <laughs> a wonderful trove of information for her as a young woman trying to get free and figure out freedom. She does not need to know all that. <laughs> You know, you've never even read my journal. And so she made it clear to me that she, she said, actually, what she said was, I was there, remember? And so that seemed to be a point to change the so But I, I wanted, because what she said to me when she dropped me off at the end of that lunch was, I think you should just burn them up and be done with it. So I was like hurt by that. So I said, okay, I'm going to see if she's right, and it's just a bunch of whining and personal information. Right, right. Or if I'm right, and it's really a freedom journey. You know, it's really a... Uh, a narrative of a woman trying to be free, trying to understand race, trying to understand gender, trying to understand love and sex and all the things that you have to understand. So when I got through reading a bunch of them, I said, I think I'm right. I think I'm right. <laughs> but then you have, the, you have two problems, I think, when you're going to use your personal journals that you only wrote for yourself. The first one is that you have to be rigorous with yourself about not doing what you're saying, oh. which is to say, I know a lot more than I knew in 1982, so I'm going to make myself a little wiser than I was. I'm going to make myself a little better. I'm not going to talk about doing any drugs. I'm not going to talk about any affairs with married men. I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff. Oh, get ready. Yeah. You, if you're not ready, get ready. I'm not going to talk about any of that stuff that I'm not necessarily proud of. But then I said to myself, if it actually is, the story of a journey, right. then you got to tell right. the story. And if you don't want to do it, this is me talking to myself. <laughs> if you don't want to do it, write novels. You don't ever have to do this. Exactly. But if you're going to do it, you got to tell the truth. That's right. Right. So that was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm much older now than I was when I was keeping these journals. I know better. I've learned lessons. I live in a much more truthful way than I did at certain times in my life when I was afraid and crazy and just... 30 or 20 and trying to figure it out. Right. So I said, okay, I'm at a point where I don't have any secrets of my own. I so don't care. I think if you don't have to let me what's it all or you're not. But I don't have a, a problem with, I don't have secrets in my life. But I also know that in a journal, you're writing about real people. Mm -hmm. So that even though you don't have any secrets, that doesn't mean that this one and that one and yes. this one are necessarily going to want to see their lives in the pages of a book. So I was very conscious about not revealing things about people who might not feel as I feel about secrets in my life. Okay. And it's, I mean, Michelle Smith is sitting here and she's in the book. You know, okay. she's in the book. I know she is. The and she, it's nothing scandalous, it's absolutely <laughs> Um, years ago, when she was living in Indianapolis, she was doing some producing as a theatrical producer. And she was, at that time, uh, married to a gentleman who was a good friend of Avery Brooks. And Michelle called me and said, would you come to Indianapolis and do a reading with Avery Brooks? And I said, are you kidding? I am newly divorced. I would love it. And when I got there, we were saying, wow. you know, oh, he's so fabulous and all that. And we had already had the discussion, oh, he's a happily married man. So honorable <laughs> behavior was required and honorable <laughs> behavior was done. But the, the entry that's in the book is for those three days, I guess, when we were getting ready for the show, doing the show, and how it felt to me to be working with an artist at that level. Mm -hmm. I mean, who was, you know, all the things that made y'all laugh when I said wanting to meet him because he totally is fine. Right. Yes. <laughs> but he also 
was. I remember we were sitting in a rehearsal watching him, and he was doing um, Othello, just a, 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 a monologue from Othello. And he was talking just the way I'm talking to you, except it was Shakespeare. But he was talking, wow. he was acting at a level that I had never been close to a person where I could say, this is someone I know, and watch him do this magic. And when he got through, and you'll see I have it in the book, we were sitting there looking at him like this. <laughs> You can step up your game, then I got to step up mine. So I, have to, I have to come with my A game because that's what this is going to yes. be. So yes. it was a um, the, that moment was so great because I was just getting up nerve enough to travel around and do the work that I do. And Michelle offered me a very safe place to do that because she was, you know, my good friend forever. I mean, she was at my first wedding, and I was at, you know, we have been through all of these things <laughs> together. So that it was important for me to include that because part of what's in the book is my growth as an artist. Mm -hmm. But since it wasn't scandalous, I figured she wouldn't mind. I'm sure when she reads it, she will laugh at all that about us being in the Mexican restaurant and toasted margaritas and say we are having fun now. <laughs> but it's, it's the other, that, that part of it where people did things that um, are completely something that they would tell right. is easy. The parts that are hard are where you're trying to tell the truth about yourself, but it also means you're going to be telling the truth about someone else. Mm -hmm. So I was rigorous with myself about you can tell anything on yourself you want to, but be compassionate and be um, realistic about the fact that these are real people that you're talking about right. and don't give away secrets that don't belong to you. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. secrets you can publish on the front of the Pearls, pearls. Pearls, pearls. Yeah. So that's where that was.